Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this breakout session. My name is Johan Claesson, and I'm the Integrity Officer at the Swedish Football Association. Uh, I've been working with Sports Integrity for more than seven years. Prior to my role as the Integrity Officer at the Swedish FA, I was the coordinator against match fixing at the Swedish Sports Confederation. And today, I will give you an insight to the match fixing situation in Swedish football. Many of you might not even be aware of the fact that we actually have a match fixing situation in Sweden. But unfortunately, that is the case. And during this session, I will tell you a bit about our anti match fixing work at the Swedish FA, but also what we need to help us fight the problem. And that is where the tech and collaboration theme of this year's SGC conference is planned to get into the picture. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, even though the Swedish FA identified match fixing as the biggest threat to football as early as back in 2012, headlines like these, uh, which is in Swedish, but this uh, headline speaks, speaks about suspicious match fixing and cases and so on. But these type of headlines has been appearing frequently in Swedish media during the last couple of years. And this has happened despite the fact that, like I said earlier, we knew that the problem existed out there. And we had early on seen it in other countries in Europe. And we had also seen cases in our neighboring Nordic countries. But for a small federation like the Swedish FA, with a lot of different work on our plates, the problem unfortunately had to happen uh, in our own front yard before we really started to work against it in a proper way. And the work against match fixing is now uh, a top priority area at the Swedish FA, and it has been so uh, since a few years back. And it is a must for it to be that way, because um, as you can see on this slide, a slide over suspicious matches in Sweden, is that when we break down the headlines of suspicious match fixing in Sweden into matches, we end up with about 30 suspicious matches each year for the last seven years. This is the period when we have started to, to keep in track of the suspicious matches. Not all of these matches is proven to have been manipulated, but it's also so that there's certainly matches that has passed under our radar and is not a part of these diagrams and on our lists of, of matches. Uh, so uh, these diagrams, uh, as I said, uh, it's an image of the matches that we have suspected for the last seven years. Uh, and it's matches on all levels in Swedish football. Uh, on the men's side, I should add. We have not yet seen any suspicious matches on the female side in our female leagues at least that we are aware of. But the matches on the men's side, it's matches from Allsvenskan uh, down to as low as Division 5, which is really the seventh tire in, in Swedish football. Um, and these different colors shows different, the different years and, and the amount of suspicious matches. And we have also seen suspicious matches in the youth leagues uh, and in, the, in cup matches in Sweden as well. The my majority of the matches that we have seen is in the third and the fourth division, but really there's no level on Swedish football that haven't, haven't been affected by this problem. And we have also seen a wide scope of different types of fixing, from the traditional fixing, fixing the end result of a match, the final score, and, and which team is supposed to win a match in question, to more like spot fixing, uh, a certain player getting a yellow card, the amount of corners in the first half of a match, and so on. But most common, though, as we have seen it, is uh, manipulation of the over market. And to be more exact, uh, that it should be more than 3.5 goals in a certain match. That is the most typical type of fixing that we have seen. And that makes it even more difficult for us to investigate, since in those type of fixes, it's difficult for us to know if it's players in both of the teams that are involved and, and or also maybe the referee. Uh, so that is also one, one extra difficult thing for us during our investigations. There are also a wide range of different actors which are the one being involved in the suspicious matches, uh, the people behind the fixing, so to say, the one who's initiating the fixes. We've seen everything from local organized crime, 
sometimes with connections to international organized crimes, but we've also seen players themselves, coaches, referees themselves fixing matches to earn a bit of an extra money. And we've also seen people close to players and referees, someone in, in their in their surroundings, a relative, a, a friend or something who has has um, uh, come to players and referees and asking them to 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 take part of manipulations. And the fixing which it which is initiated by the organized crime, it is it is often more of a big business type of fixing, uh, aiming at earning a lot of money, placing bets on the Asian betting markets, while the, the fixing initiated by the players and the referees and people close to them uh, are more type of a small scale fixing and the places are and the bets are then usually placed on the local Swedish betting market. To combat the problem with match fixing, the, F, uh, the Swedish FA has two major uh, tasks as we see it. Uh, first and foremost, it is the preventive part. It is our job at the FA to try to make sure that as few people as possible within the football family agrees to take part in match fixing. Our job to, to let them know what's, what's on the line for them if they do and, and to make as many of them say no to, to being a part of this. And the other major role we have to play is to investigate suspicious matches and try our absolute best to get the people that are guilty of match fixing convicted and suspended for breaches against our sporting regulations. And this is also an important thing in our preventive work, because if we can show that this is something that you as a player or referee, uh, you can't do it and get away with it. You will get punished and you will get suspended. That hopefully helps the players from, from not taking part of it as well. Because in Sweden, you can get suspended from all sports for up to 10 years if you are involved in match fixing. Uh, our investigations Uh, usually starts uh, in two different ways. Either we get information from our uh, from a betting company or from a monitoring company, giving us information about suspicious betting patterns or suspicious odds movement. Mm. Or we get information from someone within the football family who might have seen or heard something suspicious. And here we have seen a very positive trend the last few years. Uh, more people within sports are contacting us with information about suspicions and so on. And hopefully this is a sign that our preventive work has started to pay off because this is something that we really highlight in our education and information campaigns that you must tell us about what you know because everyone within the football have a responsibility to, to guard it from match fixers. And this information from the football family that we get, it's very important for us because we, well, once we get it, we can check that information with the betting companies and with the monitoring companies to see if they have detected or seen something suspicious or irregular as well on the betting markets. The next thing that we usually do uh, once we have a, a matching question that are suspected of, of fixing uh, is to review the match videos, if such, uh, such a match video exists, that is, because that is not always the case, especially when we come down to the lower leagues and the youth leagues where, you, where it's difficult sometimes to get a hold of, of someone who has videotaped it. But reviewing videos is an important but very difficult job because it is often very hard for us to, to say if a performance on the field is poor on purpose, or if it's just poor in general. And I will come back to this in my final slide. We also try to collect as much information as possible regarding the matching question. Uh, and this can be done by, by um, a good cooperation with other actors. Uh, for example, the UEFA or FIFA or the Nordic FAs. Uh, if we have signs that the matching question has connections to other countries, then we contact them to try to get more information. But we also have a very close and good, or great cooperation with the Swedish police. And the Swedish police actually have a specific task force uh, which are dedicated to work against organized crime in sports. Uh, and match fixing is, of course, one of their priority areas as well. 
And what we try to do at the, at the Swedish FA is to build up cases as much as we can. And when we have reached our limit, uh, then we hand over the case to the police. Uh, and they have, of course, a whole other tools uh, in their um, toolbox than we have that they can use during their investigations to get more information. And then hopefully uh, we are able to feed off the police investigation at the end so that the, many, the match fixers can get convicted both in the disciplinary committees in sports and also in the courts. But the big obstacle that both we and the police faces when we investigate matches in Sweden is to lead the, the investigations from suspicious matches down to suspicious individuals. We must know who are behind the fixing, not only what matches are suspicious. Because at the moment, that is what we need to, to do to hold someone responsible for the fixing. We have identified uh, two major things that we would like to headlight that we are in need of to increase the number of convicted match fixers in Sweden and that will help us do this. And, and this is not something we can do on ourselves, on our own in Sweden or in, in, in the football family. Like I said before, some tasks is our duty for sure that we must do without help from someone else. But there's also things that we need help with. And the first thing is uh, that we in Sweden are in need of a legal ground to be able to share the right information between the relevant actors. Today, if we have suspicions uh, against, for example, a referee, and we ask, ask questions to the licensed betting companies, they are not able to give us answers, for example, regarding if a referee has been betting on its own matches or a, play, or a relative to a player has betting on, on the player's matches in question. They are not able to give us that, those type of, that type of information, even though this is information that we really are in need of you know, to, to help our investigations. And it is also information that we know that the absolute majority of the licensed betting companies would like to share with us. They want to give us the answers that we need, but both they and we don't want to violate the GDPR, GDPR regulations. So in, in this case, even if we have had our disagreements with some of the bet, licensed betting companies in other matters, this is definitely a thing where we are on the same page. And we would, and we would really like to collaborate even more regarding this. A good example of this is that the sports movement in Sweden has initiated a network between sports and a couple of the licensed betting companies so that while we await the legal ground that we that the legal ground to share information that we are in so desperately need, in need of we can at least start to share useful information between each other that doesn't involve personal data and this network between sports and the betting companies uh, is also very important because it gives us a better understanding of each other's situation and that is helpful in the anti-match fixing work in the end as well the other thing that we would like to highlight uh, is that the Swedish FA, unfortunately, don't have the resources to have an in-house tech department that can create uh, technical solutions to the match fixing problem. But one thing that we have identified and would be very useful and, very, uh, and where technology and AI has a big part to play it is in the development of the performance analysis of actions on the football field. Because as I mentioned before, uh, reviewing matches, footages of, 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 of uh, suspicious matches, it is an important part of our match fixing investigations. But the problem is that this video reviewing at the moment, it is all based on a subjective evaluation. Uh, and therefore it is very hard for us to use as evidence in our disciplinary proceedings. We must have hard evidence uh, to be able to convict people. After all, one of the great things about football and why we, we so many people loves it, it is the uncertainty of the game. A player should in fact be able to score two own goals in the same match. A goalkeeper are supposed to, to play bad in a few couple of games um, and not be called and being accused of being a match fixer. But if the performances on the field, an own goal, a bad pass, a yellow card, 
a bad action by a goalkeeper and so on. If that could be evaluated in an objective way with the help of the technology, then this together with, for example, a betting report that matches the performances on the field, a betting report that shows that all of a sudden a lot of, of bets were was placed uh, early on in the first half and a goalkeeper performs bad early on in the first half, then this would be very useful pieces for us in our struggle to get more match fixes convicted and suspended from our football. Thank you for listening.